This tale begins in the eastern region of Australia, within Sydney, a thriving city inhabited by slightly more than 5 million individuals. Roughly 15 miles to the southwest of its borders is the unassuming neighborhood of Lugarno, housing a close-knit community of around 5,000 people. It is in this locale that the journey of Melissa Grimley, more famously known as Caddick, commenced. She would eventually transform into a persona that could instill fear in the hearts of anyone who had ever interacted with her. Melissa Louise was brought into the world on April 21, 1971, to Barbara and Ted Grimley. Her early years were filled with ease. Her father was employed by an insurance firm, and her mother worked as a physiotherapist. The Grimleys were part of the middle-class community, and her parents actively participated in the Lions Club, striving to support their local area. Melissa was a typical, inconspicuous child. She struggled academically, but developed an early love for fashion. Upon completing high school, Grimley pursued secretarial and business studies at Patrick's College in Sydney. Her initial role was as an administrator within the National Road Association's investment sector. Melissa harbored a deep fascination with finance. One night in 1992, the young lady decided to go out for a drink to relax following a hectic week. What started as one drink quickly became several, during which Grimley's attention was captured by the handsome features of a man seated close by. She was utterly captivated, only to regain her composure a few months later when she found herself without a penny. The man had exhausted her credit cards and taken numerous valuable objects from her residence. Grimley was left feeling utterly drained, but gleaned an important insight from the ordeal. Money and confidence, when entrusted to the unscrupulous, can result in dire outcomes. The lesson Melissa learned, however, would eventually not be employed to the advantage of others. In 1998, the ambitious professional landed a job as an office administrator at a Sydney-based branch of an investment bank. She was charged with managing substantial amounts of money, and despite having tasted the bitterness of financial misfortune herself, she proved to be no different from her former boyfriend. Within six months of her tenure, it was unveiled that Melissa had embezzled $2,000 from the company by falsifying the manager's signature on multiple checks. When the corporate headquarters became aware of the financial misconduct, Rather than pressing charges and exposing the security lapse, they allowed her to voluntarily resign, avoiding police involvement. Furthermore, they didn't demand the return of the misappropriated funds, deeming the sum too insignificant to warrant public fuss. In an effort to divert her attention from the sour departure, Melissa turned to her private life. She encountered a British man named Tony Caddick, and by April 2000, the couple had wed. Melissa also dedicated herself to weight loss and staying in shape, engaging a personal trainer. Through this connection, she encountered various clients, including a highly esteemed financial advisor. This individual was a high-ranking official at a currency and finance firm in need of a new office manager. Naturally, Melissa seized every opportunity to stand out. Their friendship blossomed quickly, and she was subsequently recruited for the open role within his team. Diligently focusing on her role, Melissa thrived in her new duties, swiftly discerning which risks were judicious to take and which to eschew. By 2002, Caddick had amassed sufficient funds to contribute a $750,000 investment in the firm, subsequently gaining ownership of 25% of the company's equity. Melissa Caddick's achievements were so impactful and prosperous that she was featured on the cover of the sector's publication, Independent Financial Advisor, where she was lauded as wise choice, best practice planning in Australia. In the magazine, she cautioned against financial pyramids and assorted scam operations, urging investors to verify the credentials of their financial advisors, their qualifications, and their commitment to ethical standards. This prudent counsel would later take on a note of irony, as a year thereafter, Melissa found herself disenchanted with her constructive influence and aspired to diversify her investments into real estate and the stock market. Nonetheless, her employer maintained stringent policies and rebuffed her aspirations. Following a particularly intense disagreement, Caddick departed from the company in 2004, reclaiming her $750,000 investment. 
The abrupt shift in circumstances led Melissa and her husband Tony to relocate to England, where he had previously resided before their move to Australia. By the summer of 2006, leveraging Melissa's prior financial successes, the pair established themselves in a picturesque residence in Essex, to the northeast of London. Tony achieved his qualification as a lawyer and landed a distinguished position, a milestone that coincided with the joyous arrival of their son, symbolizing the family's pinnacle of achievement. Yet, transitioning to a new country, altering their lifestyle entirely, and even the joy of becoming parents, failed to fulfill Melissa. With Tony frequently commuting long hours between Essex and London for work, Melissa often found herself isolated at home. It might have been prudent for Melissa to seek employment. However, she instead allowed her attention to drift towards other men, culminating in Tony's discovery of her affair with a former acquaintance a few months later. This individual was, in fact, Melissa's personal hairdresser from Sydney, named Anthony Coletti, a charismatic and handsome man. Melissa covertly expended funds to whisk her paramour away to various European cities, indulging in new experiences under the guise of attending financial conferences to stay abreast of industry innovations. Tony, unwilling to condone his wife's betrayal, confronted her. Rather than offering an apology or admitting her wrongdoing, Melissa responded with fury, attributing her indiscretions to her husband's shortcomings. The confrontation nearly escalated to physical violence, prompting Tony to withdraw to his parents' place to de-escalate the tension, leaving Melissa and their son behind. Upon his return a few days later, he discovered Melissa, their child, most of the household's furnishings, and all their jointly held funds were gone. Melissa had effectively plundered their assets, liquidating their furnishings and apparel, and absconded back to Sydney with their son. Once back in her native country, she initiated a campaign of defamation against her husband, portraying him as the adulterer, a compulsive liar, a harsh individual, and a negligent father, though these accusations remained largely unsubstantiated. Shortly after her return to Australia in January 2012, Melissa swiftly reconnected with her new partner, Anthony Coletti. She also took control of the property in England and sold it, netting a whopping 1.3 million US dollars from the sale. With these funds, Melissa established a lavish lifestyle, settling into a sprawling residence featuring five bedrooms and five bathrooms, located in the Rose Bay vicinity. It was in this setting that Melissa Caddick's operation of a financial pyramid scheme officially commenced. Throughout her life, Melissa harbored aspirations of substantial wealth, yet her financial dealings frequently led to adverse outcomes. An early betrayal by a deceitful lover imparted a cunning lesson on the ease of manipulating money and trust when in nefarious hands. Leveraging these insights, Caddick commenced her deceitful practices, ranging from signature forgery on checks to ultimately leaving her husband utterly destitute. Melissa was unscrupulous in exploiting others for financial gain, quickly growing weary of monotony. She deliberated on ways to fulfill her ambitions, and a grand scheme began to crystallize in her thoughts. This concept was not new to her. She had entertained it for an extended period, but had not previously acted upon it. By this juncture, Caddick had amassed considerable wealth, yet she harbored no intentions of ceasing her pursuits. Dismissing the notion of profiting from merely a handful of individuals as trivial, she crafted an elaborate strategy designed to captivate a vast audience. In 2012, Melissa set her elaborate fraud into motion, ironically betraying the advice she once dispensed on a magazine cover about verifying financial advisors' credentials. She deceitfully portrayed herself as a financial advisor to her acquaintances and relatives, assuring them that investments with her would yield substantial legal returns. She enticed investors with promises of remarkable profits, despite lacking the necessary accreditation or expertise. Upon receiving funds, Caddick fabricated trading account screenshots and dispatched bogus monthly profit reports via email, displaying gains of 10, 20, or even 30%. These fabricated successes bolstered investors' confidence in Melissa, prompting them to either increase their investments or refer new clients to her. Caddick's bank balance swiftly escalated from thousands to millions as she swindled friends, ex-colleagues, 
her personal trainer, family members, and even her parents. Her spending became increasingly flamboyant and excessive, squandering her illicit gains on luxury automobiles, high-end fashion, art, and jewelry. She extravagantly expended over $48,000 on Chanel products, $275,000 on international travel, $229,000 at Dior, and more than $25,000 on protein shakes alone, all while maintaining an air of affluence that was unbeknownst to her family and friends, financed by their own losses. To cultivate an aura of exclusivity around her business, Melissa falsely informed potential investors that her ledger was full, only to later entice them with offers of supposedly newly available slots if they acted swiftly. By the year 2014, Melissa had purchased a lavish property on Orlando Road for upwards of $6 million. This luxurious mansion boasted stunning views of the Sydney Harbour Bridge, featuring expansive living areas, a swimming pool, and a large dining space with a panoramic view of the city. In 2016, she gifted her then-husband, Anthony Coletti, an Audi R8 valued at $390,000, personalized with a license plate representing his music label, marking his ventures as a musician and hobbyist DJ. Additionally, Melissa herself owned several high-priced vehicles. Since 2009, Melissa embarked on 25 international trips, exploring destinations ranging from the ski resorts of Aspen to secluded islands in the South Pacific, all financed by her circle of family and friends. Melissa's parents liquidated their family residence, located in southern Sydney, and entrusted the proceeds to their daughter for the purchase of a penthouse in Edgecliff, with the agreement they would retain a lifetime right to live there. Contrarily, Caddick listed the apartment solely under her name and diverted the funds towards purchasing a diamond valued at $590,000, among other personal expenditures. Melissa not only unscrupulously ascended to wealth, but also lavished millions annually on fulfilling her materialistic desires, enjoying stays at exclusive retreats, traveling on private jets, and affording any luxury she fancied. For a duration of eight years, Melissa's elaborate financial pyramid scheme persisted without retribution. She managed a Ponzi scheme, generating returns for early investors with the capital from new investors. Through her deceit, Caddick amassed approximately 30 million Australian dollars. However, as all things inevitably conclude, Melissa was acutely aware of this reality. She simply chose to disregard it. The foundation of her deceptive operations began to show signs of instability in 2019 when the Australian Securities and Investments Commission, ASIC, was tipped off that Caddick was operating as a financial advisor without the requisite licensing. Initially, this revelation did not lead to immediate action, but by June 2020, the situation garnered serious attention from investigators. It was uncovered that Caddick indeed lacked an Australian financial services license and had been illegitimately using the credentials of a previous colleague and friend by fraudulently adding her own name to the documents. This discovery gave the commission ample cause for alarm, especially since Caddick had by then deceitfully extracted approximately 30 million Australian dollars from her clients. Authorities initiated rigorous surveillance of Melissa, meticulously documenting each of her transactions over the following months. This thorough investigation eventually culminated in the gathering of conclusive evidence of her fraudulent activities. On November 10th, 2020, the regulatory body took decisive action by freezing Melissa's assets and seizing her passport. The subsequent day witnessed a search operation at Caddick's opulent mansion, appraised at over $6 million. During the raid, Caddick appeared visibly anxious, her behavior indicating an acute awareness of the precariousness of her situation, as the lavish lifestyle she had been leading was imminently threatened. Given the gravity of the fraudulent charges against her, she was potentially facing a significant prison sentence. Thus, it was hardly unexpected when, in the dawn hours of the day following the asset freeze and property search, Caddick vanished without a trace. On the brisk morning of November 12, 2020, before the first light of dawn, Melissa quietly arose from her bed, dressed in her running attire, 
and silently exited the bedroom while Anthony remained asleep. She slipped into her sneakers and made her way to the front door. As she left the house, the soft click of the door was heard by her 14-year-old son, marking the last moment she was seen. Anthony reported his wife missing at 11.30 a.m. the following day, a full 30 hours after she vanished. The news of her disappearance triggered an intensive investigation by detectives who, in light of her recently uncovered fraudulent schemes, found her sudden absence highly suspect. The Australian Securities and Investments Commission, ASIC, already scrutinizing her for financial deception, viewed her disappearance amidst spreading rumors of her fraud among investors with great suspicion. A week passed with no leads, plunging Melissa's family into deep anguish. They made public pleas through the media, urging her to come forward or at least signal that she was safe. The gravity of her actions weighed heavily, having defrauded millions from not just any individuals, but from some significantly influential figures alongside her own friends and family. These investors were all too aware of the lavish manner in which Melissa had misappropriated their investments. They knew her residence, intensifying the mystery of her whereabouts. Questions arose whether Melissa had chosen to vanish on her own accord or if retribution from a scorned investor had befallen her. Investigators initiated their search by scrutinizing Melissa's telephone records, discovering no subsequent activity post her disappearance. Crucial belongings such as her phone and keys were left behind in her home. Additionally, her banking activities ceased, propelling the officers to examine local CCTV footage from the day she vanished. Despite their efforts, Melissa was not captured on any camera, indicating she might have exited the vicinity in a private vehicle or was possibly escorted away by someone else. An alternative hypothesis considered was that Melissa had not traveled far and opted to conceal herself in proximity, though this notion was deemed improbable. Amidst growing desperation, some conjectured that Melissa might have succumbed to despair, contemplating suicide by plunging into the ocean from the jagged cliffs, merely 900 feet from her residence. However, Anthony, along with other intimates, staunchly believed Melissa would not abandon her son, especially when faced with allegations that, albeit serious, might result in only a modest prison term or a hefty fine at most. This belief in her unwillingness to forsake her son led to the swift rejection of the suicide theory by her acquaintances and subsequently by the authorities, especially in the absence of any physical evidence or discovery of her body. The authorities broadened their search to encompass the entire Australian territory, as Caddick's travel document had been seized, rendering her unable to depart the country through legal means. Owing to the peculiarities of the case, information about Melissa's vanishing spread rapidly, not only within Australia but also abroad. Sightings of the woman were reported in Brisbane, Melbourne, and even Darwin. Now, with her identity known to millions, Melissa found herself with no place to conceal herself. The officials anticipated that Caddick would eventually come forward on her own. This situation persisted until 101 days later, the ocean ominously brought a ghastly item to the shore. On February 21, 2021, a pair of beachgoers picking up litter along Burnda Beach on the coast of New South Wales spotted a grey sneaker from afar. Upon closer inspection, they realized it was attached to a foot, which was emitting a foul smell, with its contents decomposed and discolored. The sneaker, having washed ashore just hours earlier, contained a human foot and aligned with the size and characteristics of Melissa's shoes. As forensic experts embarked on DNA verification, oceanographic scientists delved into analyzing the Tasman Sea's coastal currents to figure out how this morbid discovery ended up on Bornda Beach, 250 miles away from the Caddick household. A week following the find of the human remains, DNA testing confirmed a match with samples obtained from Melissa's toothbrush. Family members also recognized the sneaker as that of the vanished woman. Despite the confirmation of Melissa's foot being found, there was widespread conjecture on whether she was deceased or still alive. Many speculated it was a strategy to elude punishment from swindled investors as her spouse, relatives, and acquaintances concurred she would not end her own life. 
This led to speculation about whether another party was involved in Melissa's vanishing. Caddick had defrauded numerous investors, absconding with their life savings. It's conceivable that one of these individuals sought vengeance, or perhaps it was a collaborator of hers, someone desiring to stay hidden and dodge incarceration. Melissa's life was disintegrating before her very eyes. Being apprehended meant the loss of her wealth, liberty, companionships, and her entire family. It's difficult to ascertain her thoughts that fateful morning. Could an epiphany have compelled her to leap from a cliff? The state of Melissa's foot, severely decomposed, led many experts to argue the improbability of it staying intact after 100 days in the ocean, prompting speculations of a contrived scenario. Ironically, Caddick was familiar with the beach, having spent numerous summer vacations there during her youth. Some theorize she might have severed her own foot and placed it there as a misdirection, a theory that continues to spark heated discussions. Anthony Coletti admitted his unawareness of his wife's financial deceit, believing their lifestyle was funded by legitimate means. Rumors circulated that Caddick had taken loans to invest in cryptocurrency, hoping to settle her debts with investors before vanishing, pondering over strategies to evade detection and emerge unharmed. With no fresh leads or evidence forthcoming, Melissa Caddick was officially declared dead, and the process of liquidating her estate commenced. To Anthony's dismay, his $390,000 vehicle was sold at auction to offer partial restitution to some investors, along with other assets. Despite the circumstances, the Dover Heights mansion technically remained under Caddick's name, as Anthony argued he required the funds to care for Melissa's child. He also claimed his bank account held merely $1.95, depending solely on the allowance provided by the security firm managing Melissa's seized assets. In May 2022, the federal court ordered Anthony Coletti to leave the mansion, and by October, the property was put up for auction. Subsequently, Melissa's collection of designer attire, art pieces, high-end goods, and jewelry was sold off. The revenue generated was allocated to partially offset the investors' losses, yet numerous defrauded parties ended up with nothing. Some had invested their entire retirement funds, while others liquidated their enterprises in the hope of emulating the affluence Melissa Caddick had projected. She had enticed them with visions of a lavish lifestyle and success, mirroring her own purported achievements. Anthony, who had taken up amateur DJing, dedicated himself to producing a music album centered on Melissa's mysterious disappearance. He contended that his wife was unjustly maligned and deemed the entire search operation as unlawful. Nonetheless, investigators remain puzzled about why he delayed reporting his wife missing and ponder his potential involvement in her disappearance. The saga of Melissa Caddick, the Australian who orchestrated her own financial empire, continues to be a puzzle. Her narrative has inspired numerous podcasts and even a television miniseries. The enduring question remains, what truly befell Melissa? Did a surge of guilt propel her to her doom? Was she a victim of someone's vengeance for her deceit? Or might Caddick still be alive, discreetly enjoying life on a distant island? Only time may reveal the actuality of these events. This is the end of the story. Like the video and leave your thoughts in the comments. This was Jeremy. See you soon.